This video will do work together 10-4 from our Century 21 accounting uh, textbook by Gilbertson, Lehman, and Gentine. So um, credit given to them for this problem and uh, the textbook. So we have done our cash receipts journal in 10-3. We journalized those transactions. And now we need to do posting the transactions from the cash receipts journal to the accounts receivable ledger. So the first thing we'll do is go back to our cash receipts journal. And we see that on September 3rd, Lenny Stafford um, paid $2,189.36. So we need to post that to our accounts receivable ledger. So we go back here. Lenny Stafford, and this was on, let's see, the 3rd, right? So the day after he bought the stuff, he paid a credit of $2,189.36, and um, this was from Cash Receipts Journal, CR is the abbreviation for that nine. Okay, so we had a debit balance, so we'll go ahead and take that amount and we're gonna go minus the credit. So he still owes 1696. So he paid his balance before, but he didn't pay for his most recent transaction. Okay, and this was account 110. So now we'll go back to our cash receipts journal and we'll put account 110 there in the posting reference. All right, so this one is an X there. We also don't post that one. Um, it'll get posted as a total later. So now Venice Cafe on the 8th, 390.34. So we'll come over here. Venice Cafe on the 8th paid 390.34. <clears throat> And this was um, Cash Receipts Journal, page 9 again. And our new balance is the previous debit balance minus this credit. And again, Venice Cafe paid their previous balance. They didn't pay for their most recent transaction because you can see that's the amount they still owe. Count number 120. So we'll put that here. Um, the next transaction doesn't get posted individually to the accounts receivable ledger. And now we go Washington Schools, and that's um, 1509.45 on the 28th. So Washington Schools on the 28th, fifth, do credit. 1509.45, so equals this previous debit balance minus the credit. They still owe 25.29 to us. And this is, again, cash receipts journal page 9 and account number 130. It comes back here. So we have now completed part 1, post the transactions to the accounts receivable ledger. Now we need to total improve the cash receipts journal. So to total improve, we usually just do a big bold line. You can change that there. And that shows that we're going to add. We did not have any general debits or general credits. We can see that, but we can just go ahead and do a sum function anyway, and then just drag it the whole way over because that will have added all of 30th total. I will have added all of these for each one. Okay, so now we need to make sure that our debits equal our credits. And we make sure that our debits equal our credits on this um, problem here, our general debit. So we'll go back to our cash receipts journal, and that was zero. 
and then I can do equals, click on the journal I want to go to for general credit, enter, and it pulls that number from a different sheet, which works good. Accounts receivable credit equals this number, enter. Sales credit equals sign, cash receipts journal, this number. Now sales tax payable credit and sales discount debit. and cash debit. Okay, so now I put a sum function in this cell here, 15658.64, they equal. So that means that um, we're going to be okay, I think, to post these now. And since they equal, we get to do the double lines underneath those. All right, so now if we look back at our instructions, we have totaled and proven it. Now we need to prove cash and the balance on the next unused check stub was 1760896. Prove cash. Okay. Back to this tab. 1760896. That goes here. 1760896 is the number we're trying to come up with. So, cash on hand at the beginning of the month. So, the September 1st balance of cash. I will just go back to my general ledger, cash, September 1st balance, there it is, and then I'll just hit enter, plus total cash received during the month, which is the cash debit column total in your cash receipts journal, so equals, we'll go to my cash receipts journal, cash debit, enter, equals the total, just added those together. Now we're going to do less total cash, which means subtract, total cash paid during the month. So general ledger posting in the cash account. So we'll go to equals general ledger cash credit cash paid during the month. Enter. And cash on hand at the end of the month. 17608.97. One cent. Huh. Well, looking at my answer key, that one is correct. 1560704. Cash receipts journal. We're one cent off right there. Okay. I wonder where. Let's find our mistake. You know, what I figured out it is, is that I used the function of two cents on these two sales discount debit numbers. And um, I think if you increase your decimal places, you see that they are not exact numbers. And that is what happened here, is it's just one cent difference because of some rounding. So um, we're just going to ignore that one cent difference and know that we could have done um, a different function that would round, like an equals round function would put it at exactly, you know, whatever number here with only two decimal places. So then we wouldn't have this issue. But overall, not that big of a deal today. So we're going to move on and finish proving cash. We called that close enough. It's just a round if issue, so it'll be all right. And now we are number four, ruling the cash receipts journal, which we basically already did here. Um, that just means to you know do our lines and post the cash receipts journal to the general ledger. All right, so. 
we've got to do accounts receivable credit 4089.15. 4089.15 accounts receivable credit. So we'll go over here, accounts receivable, and this is on the end of the month, the 30th, and this is from our cash receipts, page nine, and the amount, accounts receivable credit is 4089.15. And so we're still going to have a debit balance, um, but we'll subtract this credit from it. So the debit balance will be smaller. Count 1130. So now we'll go back to our cash receipts journal. Account number 1130. And remember, we have to make this a plain text. Otherwise, it doesn't let us put the the parentheses around it. There it is. We posted. We'll just make it red for fun. And now we'll do sales credit of 10, 9, 50, 75. So back to our ledger. Sales credit of 10, 9, 50, 75. And this was cash receipts, page 9, on the 30th. And that will increase our credit balance because we'll just add that credit to it. And account number 4110. So now we'll go back to our cash receipts journal. We'll just format paint roller this. And it was 4110. In that format painter just made sure that it knew we wanted the plain text and all of that there. Sales tax payable credit. So we'll come over here to our general ledger, sales tax payable on the 30th. Cash receipts. And oops, CR9 and sales tax payable gets a credit of 618.74 and so that will add to the credit balance 21.20 there it is sales discount debit of 51.59 sales discount debit of 51.59 increases that debit balance cash receipts 9 on the 30th 41.20 is the account number and cash debit Okay, 1560705. Cash 30th. Cash receipts 9. And this is a cash debit up 15607. We had 05. It really was supposed to be 04. So we'll make that change there. Equals the previous debit balance plus this debit. 1110 and we'll come back here. 1110 is our account number. Okay, we have done that. Part six of this is to prepare a schedule of accounts receivable. And our company name is Classic Appliances. And this is us. Uh, as of September 30th, 2020, or current year, whenever you're doing this. And all you do is go back to your general ledger and find the balance for each company name and put them in, which I will do very quickly. After I have the balance, I'm just going to add them up. And I have the number 693860. Now I just flip over to my general ledger and I see the number 693860 is the balance, so it equals. So I can just go ahead and do my 
double line underneath and we are done.